Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your Computer Systems Servicing NC2. I am your teacher, Mrs. Diana Caridad Cos, and welcome to your online ICT class. Our topic for today is about your core competency number one, which is installing and configuring computer systems. And the objectives you are expected to, number one, identify the different parts and functions of a computer. Number two, plan unit assembly to ensure OHS policies and procedures are followed in accordance with system requirements. And our first topic for that particular core competency is types and parts of a computer systems. But before that, of course, let us define what is a hardware component of the computer systems. When you say hardware components, it's the physical parts of the computer, including the processor and memory chips, input-output devices, tapes, desk, modems, cable, etc. Or in other words, they are the tangible components of your computer system. A computer system is made up of four main types of components, and those are your input devices, processing devices, storage devices, and output devices. Okay, let's proceed now to the parts identification. Are you ready? Okay, let's start with the basics of computer. I know you can identify or you can ID the parts and I hope in this lesson you will be able to identify the basic parts of the computer systems. Let's start. Okay, so what do you call that one? And if your answer is CPU, that is wrong. The correct term for that one is system case. The primary function of the system case is to hold all the other components together and protect the sensitive electronic parts from the outside elements. Again, that one is what you call a system case and it's not called CPU, okay? Next. Okay, what do you call that one? The answer is motherboard. The motherboard is one of the most essential parts of a computer system. It holds together many of the crucial components of a computer including the central processing unit or your CPU, memory and connectors for input and output devices. In other words, the motherboard is your main board. Next. Okay, what do you call that one? The answer is power supply unit. Now, what is the function of your power supply unit? It converts main AC or alternating current to low voltage and regulated DC or direct current power for the internal components of a computer. Modern personal computers universally use switch mode power supply. And we have two types of power supply, the AT power supply and the ETX power supply. 
Okay, how are you going to distinguish the difference between an 80 power supply and an ATX power supply? Very simple. In 80 power supply, there is a P9 and P8 power connector, which is not available in ATX power supply. By the way, AT stands for Advanced Technology, while ATX stands for Advanced Technology Extended. Okay, going back to our topic, how are you going to distinguish if your power supply is an AT type or an ATX type? Again, AT has a P9 and P8 power connector. This is only available for the very old um, power supply. Okay, and for the newer PC, it always support an ATX type of power supply, wherein you can see the ATX 20 or 24 pin power connectors. We have the P4 power connectors, the Molex power connector, and of course, the SATA power connector. Okay, and those four different power connectors are not available in the AT type of your power connector. I, I mean power supply. Okay, let's proceed to the next one. Okay, what do you call that one? Of course, you already know that. That is your central processing unit or the CPU. The CPU of a computer is just a piece of hardware that carries out the instructions of a computer program and it performs the basic arithmetic, logical, and input-output operations of a computer system. Or in other words, your CPU is the heart, the heart and brain of your computer system. Remember again, CPU is the heart and brain of your computer system. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, what do you call that one? It looks like a chocolate bar. Okay, if your answer is random access memory, you're correct. Or what we call the physical memory of your computer. It is a form of fast access, volatile storage that is used as the main memory in computer system and the most widely used for form of ROM for the main memory is the dynamic ROM or the DRAM. Okay, let's take a look how many types of ROM do we have nowadays. Okay, so we have DDR1 that stands for dual data rate one. We have DDR2, DDR3, and DDR4. Okay, what do you think? Do we have DDR5 or 6? Okay, you're correct. We have DDR5 out in the market compared to its predecessor DDR4 SDRAM. DDR5 is planned to reduce power consumption while doubling bandwidth. And this was released just recently, last July 14, 2020. Let's move on to the next. Okay, what do you call that one? It looks like a bar. Okay, that is your hard desk drive. Okay, and hard, a hard desk drive or fixed desk is an electromechanical data storage device that uses magnetic storage to store and retrieve digital information using one or more rigid rapidly rotating desk or platters coated with magnetic material or in other words your hard disk drive is your long storage device wherein you can save all your documents wherein all the other application was stored on that particular storage. And that is your hard disk drive. And we have two types of hard disk drive. We have the SATA type and the IDE type. The IDE type is for the older type of PC, while the SATA type is for the newer PC. 
If you use a SATA type of HDD, of course, you need to use a SATA cable. And if you use the IDE type of HDD, you need to use an IDE cable. Okay, next. Okay, what do you call that one? Very familiar, right? Okay, that is your optical desk drive. Okay, what is the function of your optical desk drive or your ODD? It uses a laser light to read data from or write data to an optical desk. This include CDs, DVDs, and blurry desks. This allows you to play music or watch movies using pre-recorded desks. Okay. So next we have, of course, you already know this one. That is your monitor. And a computer monitor is a display adapter that displays information processed by the computer's video card. When a video card or graphics card converts binary information from ones and zeros into images, these images are displayed onto the directly connected monitor and what do you think how many types of monitor do we have okay is it one is it two or three yes the answer is three we have three types of monitor the first one very old we have the cathode ray tube or the crt then we have the liquid crystal display or the lcd and the recent one we have the led or the light emitting diode the led is much more um energy saving one okay so if you are planning to have your um monitor so make sure to buy an led one okay next okay of course you know this one right that is your keyboard and mouse the keyboard allows the user to type letters and numbers and the mouse allows the user to position the cursor, draw and execute program functions by clicking the mouse buttons. Okay, next. Okay, so basically again, those are our basic parts of the computer. Again, let's have a recap. What are those? We have the monitor. Yes, we have the HDD or the hard disk drive. Then we have the keyboard and mouse. Then we have the PSU or the power supply unit. We have the motherboard, of course, the central processing unit, and the random access memory, which refers to the physical memory of your computer. That's correct. The basic parts of the computer, we have seven. Okay, then for additional components, here we go. Okay, what do you call that one? That is your video card. The video card is an expansion card that allows the computer to send graphical information to a video display device such as your monitor, TV, or projector. Okay, so what are the different types of a video card? Basically, we only have two types. The first one is the accelerated graphic port or the AGP. And the other one, we have the peripheral components interconnect express. So how are you going to, to, to know if what type of video card you're going to buy? You just check your motherboard. Your motherboard will determine what kind of video card you are going to to buy okay if you want to you know to upgrade your your graphics then you need to buy a video card but if you don't want you just want the you know the built-in one that's okay that is why the video card is part of the additional components only okay next okay what do you call that one very easy right that is your computer speaker what is the function it is an output hardware device that connects to a computer to generate a 
sound. Basic fu function of speaker. Next, we have, okay, I know, you know that one. That is your, yes, printer. And the function of a printer is to turn digital data into printed media. And this could be text or it could be a graphic output. Okay, next. Okay, you know this one? Yes, that is your image projector. It is an optical device that projects an image or moving images onto a surface, commonly a projection screen. This is mainly used during a meeting or conference. Yeah, this, this is widely used in, in, in school or in offices, an image projector. Next. Okay, that's all. So again, what are the additional components you can add on your computer? Yes, we have, okay, a video card. Then we have, what else? Video card, speaker, okay, very good. Then we have printer with scanner, of course. Then the last one is your projector. But basically, if you don't buy these four additional components, still your computer system will work smoothly. That is why it's, it's only additional component okay let's have a mind bites are you ready here we go what are the four components of a computer systems the answer is input devices processing devices, storage devices, and output devices. Or we have the EPSO, input, processing, storage, and output. Okay, can you identify the different input devices? Very good. Those are the keyboard and mouse. By the way, keyboard is the uh, primary input device while the mouse is the primary input device of a newer PC. Okay, the keyboard for the old PC, the mouse for the newer PC. Why? Because before we have the um, command line interface, that is why keyboard is the primary input device. And today, we already support the graphical user interface. Even without the keyboard, you can still do the typing just by using the mouse. If you're familiar with the on-screen keyboard, okay, that's possible because of the graphical user interface. Okay, next. We have the processing device. Can you identify? Very good. The answer is the central processing unit, which is the heart and brain of your computer systems. What about the storage devices? Okay, very good. We have the hard disk drive and the random access memory. Again, your hard disk drive is your long-term storage device, while your random access memory is your secondary storage device. And for example, if you want to save your documents from an external, you can make use of your external hard disk drive or what we call enclosure or the very popular one, the flash drive or the pen drive. What about the output devices? Can you name some? Very good. We have the monitor, speaker, projector, and printer.
monitor is common output device. Okay. So I hope you learned something, basic components of the computer system, the additional components. You'll, you'll be able to identify the functions of the computer. We have the EPSO, again, that is your input, processing, storage, and output. So do not forget, if you still want to, to learn something about the basic subcomputer, you just Go to everything you need to know about computer hardware in www.lifeware.com or visit small business or parts of computer uses. Or if you want to watch the video, just log on or visit my YouTube channel. That is Diana Curry. So I hope you learned something from our tutorial today and see you on our next online class. This is your teacher, Mrs. Diana Caridad Goss. Happy to serve! Bye! Click here! Click here! Click here! Please click here to subscribe!